Amari, what do you see in this week's matchup against the Bears? What do you see from their offense? You know they got a new quarterback. But yeah. Um, you know, definitely seeing uh, the quarterback is, is, is a big thing. Um, two totally different players with, with different skill sets. Uh, this quarterback has got in and done some good things, getting rid of the ball, um, making the right reads, going to the right places with the ball. They have a really good run, running attack. A lot of guys they can put back there in the backfield that can do a lot of damage. Uh, you know, some, some receivers who's had, had a lot of success. Uh, you know, tight end who's playing like one of the best tight ends in the game right now. So, I mean, they're able to 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 do some really great things that we got to be ready for. Mario, a week ago you were talking about the week before them being given a 0% chance to play. Now you've got two weeks, you know, out of that. How has that process been for you in terms of? Oh, praise God, man. Um, my body feels amazing. Um, to be 34 years old, feeling this good. Um, it's just a blessing. So I say praise God, you know, praises to um, our, our staff, you know, uh, making sure that we're ready to go from things that we do in practice, things that we do in the training room, things that we do in the weight room, uh, making sure that each individual player has a progression plan. They're feeling good and ready to go on on, uh, on Sundays. And um, to this point, each and every Sunday, I've been able to step out on the field, Thursday and Sundays, just feeling good. And so um, just want to keep that going. Um, so. Yeah. You mentioned before the Jacks or that that before the Jacksonville game, they kind of had to believe in you a little bit, go mm -hmm. out there and, and show how much. How was that process in Indy? A little bit easier. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was. It was. It was like a uh, a miracle healing. Um, you know, just from the status of what it was coming out of a a Sunday game and then playing on Thursday and medically it just didn't look good. Um, just based on history and players um, that had similar situations. And so going into that game, um, I felt nothing. You know, uh, the coach still tried to be responsible and do limited snaps just because they didn't know. But I felt, I felt good going into the game. Um, it felt like I could have played all the snaps. And so I think after showing that, they, they felt more confident going in the last game where I was able to come back and play all the snaps. Um, and so just want to keep everything going up and up and just continue to go. Um, you know, it's a blessing, of course, from above, but you still have to follow protocol. You know, you still have to be smart with it. Um, and, and I trust our staff, I trust our team, and what they're what they're advising. So uh, it's been good, man. I'm I'm, I'm blessed. Mario, what would you do if you couldn't play a football game? What would you even do with yourself? What would I do? <laughs> That's interesting, man. That's a great question. I mean, that week, I remember um, just really trying to pray about it because ultimately my faith moves everything that I do. So it was really about, God, what do you want? If you want me to play and you're saying go play, you're going to make a way for me to play. But if you're making it where I can't go play, then obviously you're making, you mean don't play. And so my mindset is the fruit is going to be wherever he leads. So I may not be able to see it and I may want to go play, but he knows what's best for me. And so if I'm not playing, then it's probably a reason. So it's whether he's protecting me from something, whether it's, uh, something else going on that I can't see. So ultimately, I'm going to be good with it because I know that's what he wants, even though if I don't feel good about it. You know, I may be down or upset, but ultimately I got to get to what he wants is best for me. And that's not always easy for anybody, um, especially when we, we want something and feel like he's saying no or not right now. The worst thing that I can do in that situation is try to make a way out of my own way. That's always going to be detrimental. So that's how I try to look at it. Mario, what you guys have had a ton of success for tight ends since you against tight ends since you've been here. What do you attribute that to? Uh, mostly it falls on um, the secondary and linebackers to to stop tight ends and running backs. And I think from the time that I've been here, um, one consistent part has been Mike Hodges. Uh, he does a great job of making sure that we know everything that the running backs are going to do, everything the tight end is going to do, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, how the coaches are trying to get them the ball, where they want to give them the ball at. And we do a lot of drills to, to be ready for those situations, whether it's first and second down, whether it's third down, whether it's red zone, who are the guys they're going to try to get the ball to and where they're going to try to get them at. And, um, and he's just allowed us to be – in the best situation as far as preparation for those, and we've been able to respond. And I think 
at the same time, we've had a lot of good players at the position um, to be able to go out and do it. So it's, it's, it's a coaching standpoint and it's a personnel standpoint. Like you see Pete playing the wheel where I used to play the wheel and Pete's great against tight ends and running backs. That's who usually gets that matchup, those guys on the outside, those guys that are in the boundary. And he's just been phenomenal at guarding them. But I think a lot of it goes, he, A, he has tremendous ability, but B, a lot of it is just that preparation that we have in the linebacker room. And I can say the same thing for the secondary when it's on safeties. Is, is that a part of your game that is, is more of a strength now than it was earlier in your career too? Or? Absolutely. Um, I'm, I take a lot of pride in my game as being very sound in the run game and coverage. And when I speak coverage, it's one thing to be good in zone and know where the spots are, whether they're running digs behind you, whether they're running overs and getting underneath you, or you got the guy in the flat. It's another thing to have matchups where you guarding, you know, a, a receiving running back or a receiving tight end and have that one-on-one -on -one matchup. Um, I had one of those in the game last week. I take a lot of pride in being able to do that, but I also take a lot of pride in being able to get out to the quarterback and put pressure on the quarterback. So um, for me, it's about being dominant in all those spaces. Like, I don't want, when you think of a linebacker that's good against the run or a linebacker that's good at covering or a linebacker that can pass rush the quarterback, an inside backer, I want to be in the top of that conversation. That's, that's my mindset. And so um, I, didn't know, I wasn't always like that, but I took a lot of time visiting with people who were good in those spaces, whether it was current players, former players, uh, technique coaches. And I spent a lot of time, you know, in the off season, just over throughout the years, putting in work so that I could become good at that. And um, I think the work is, has shown. So praise God for that. You mentioned their tight end just when you were giving the rundown on the Bears. Is this even more than most teams, uh, an offense that goes through their tight end, it seems like, or makes him a high priority? Well, if you look at him, he can run all the routes. Um, he's very uh, shifty in his routes. He, he, you know, he runs well. He catches well. Uh, just a, a wide catch radius, and they like throwing him the ball. Um, he has he got, had a ton of targets and you know uh, a ton of receptions, and so you just have to respect. It. That's what the film says. Hey, Dorian, I know you on the outside side of the ball. But how tough would it be to tackle somebody like Tyson? <laughs> I'm glad he's on my team, man. Um, well, firstly, when you got a guy that can play that many positions, you don't know where he's going to line up. So that makes you pause just for a little bit to figure out where is this guy going to be? Is he going to be a tight end? He's going to be a receiver. He's going to be in the backfield. He's going to be a quarterback. And then when he's at quarterback, he can still throw the ball. Um, so he's like a wildcat guy, but he can throw. So that makes you have so much more to defend. Um, and then when he's coming downhill, he's coming downhill. He, he a machine. And, man, I done seen Taysom take some licks, but he's still, he's still falling forward. Um, so it just tells you what type of runner he is. And, I mean, he's just a complete package. And, you know, I, I know it's tough for other teams to deal with. It seems to this point in the season, there's been a good bit of continuity on the defense. You haven't been constantly shifting in and out. How valuable is that as you, you know, work on getting better throughout the courses? What do you mean by that? Ask that question a little bit differently. Well, I mean, so, for example, there hasn't been, you haven't need, or Pete was hurt last year, so you had to find different bodies. You know, every season you see guys go out march on last year. This year it seems like it's been pretty stable. Is that an advantage as you kind of work throughout the course of the season, improve on the things you need to improve? Well, I mean, it's a next man up league, but you, but you have a depth chart for a reason. So when you got your guys in, it's going to be better for you. I think that's just, I think that's consistent across the league, you know. So, um, yeah, it's been a blessing for the most part. We've been able to be healthy and have our guys in. Hey, thank you. Y'all be blessed.